Hello, my friends. How are you? Welcome to another episode of 30 Albums for 30 Years. I am your host, Jay Sweet. Today's record, The Yardbirds, having a rave up with The Yardbirds Epic Records, recorded March 1964, well, part of the record, and then the rest was April through September of 1965. Don't worry, I'll explain it all. But the release date was November 15th, 1965. So let's get into it. The Yardbirds having a rave up with the Yardbirds. Okay, let's learn about the Yardbirds. The Yardbirds are an English rock band, and besides their few hits, the group is best remembered for introducing three of the most prominent rock guitarists in the history of the music. That is Eric Clapton, Jeff Beck, and Jimmy Page. They were all, at one time, Yardbirds. The group began in 1963 near London and began as the Metropolitan Blues Quartet. The original band included vocalist and harmonica player Keith Ralph, drummer Jim McCarty, guitarist Chris Dredge, and bassist Paul Samuel Smith. At one point, the group picked up lead guitarist Top Topham, and they changed their name to the Yardbirds, which was likely a reference to jazz legend Charlie Parker, whose nickname was Yardbird, or Bird. The Yardbirds hit the blues and R&B scene and worked regularly as the house band at the Craw Daddy Club after the Rolling Stones left a residency there. The group's repertoire mainly consisted of Chicago blues tunes, and late in 1963, Top Topham left the group and Eric Clapton stepped in. The Yardbirds then toured as a backup band for blues legend Sonny Boy Williamson II. This gave these young white British musicians some street credibility. In early 1964, the Yardbirds signed with Columbia Records and recorded some live tracks at the Marquee Club in London. This resulted in their debut album, Five Live Yardbirds, 1964 release. They also released two singles, I Wish You Would and Good Morning Schoolgirl, and their first big hit came after that with For Your Love. And when that was released, the Yardbirds began to fly a little higher. With the success of For Your Love, which was not a pure blues, the group began to move away from their Chicago blues repertoire. And this angered Eric Clapton, who seemed to get pissed off relatively easily. And he left the band and joined John Maytall and the Blues Breakers. Eric Clapton jumped in and out of bands throughout the 1960s and worked with the Yardbirds, of course, the Blues Breakers, Cream, Blind Faith, Delaney and Bonnie, and John Lennon's Plastic Uno Band. So when he left, Eric Clapton recommended session musician Jimmy Page for the gig. But Page was happy as a studio musician, and Jimmy Page then recommended Jeff Beck and Jeff Beck joined the band. At the time, Beck was experimenting with new guitar effects and techniques, and he added a unique sound to the band. With Beck, the groove moved into a more experimental phase, a more experimental sound that included everything from Gregorian chants to Middle Eastern melodies. So now that brings us to the time of the album, 1965, and the album having a rave up with the Yardbirds. In 1965, the Yardbirds had their best year and released two records. The first was For Your Love, which showcased new studio recordings with Beck and earlier singles with Clapton. The feature of that album was the single For Your Love. Now that album reached number 96 on the charts. The next release is Having a Rave Up with the Yardbirds, today's album and it is considered by many to be their best, and is also considered to be one of the earliest albums to incorporate a psychedelic rock sound. 
Having a rave up with the Yardbirds reached only number 53 on the U.S. charts. However, it is and was considered a critical achievement and a forward-looking record, and it's been more widely celebrated throughout the years. Now, the album is unique because Side 1 features new studio recordings with Jeff Beck. Side 2 offers live performances from 1964 that were also included in their debut record, Five Live Yardbirds, and that's with Eric Clapton. So by comparing both sides, you can hear the sound shift from Eric Clapton to Jeff Beck. So a lot happens with the group following the release of having a rave up with the Yardbirds. Their next release was called Roger the Engineer, which was issued in 1966 with Jeff Beck featured on all tracks. That same year, bassist Samuel Smith quit the band in a drunken rage during a show and Jimmy Page was in attendance at that show and then he agreed to play bass with the Yardbirds and was kind of hoping that Chris Dredger would learn the bass parts and give up his role as the rhythm guitarist and Dredger would become the bassist and Page would become the guitarist. Later in that tour, Jeff Beck gets sick and Jimmy Page does take over as lead guitarist in his absence. When Jeff Beck returned, Jimmy Page remained on guitar along with Beck and for a short period, the Yardbirds had two of the greatest lead guitarists in the same band. In 1966, the group was on tour with the Rolling Stones and Beck was eventually fired or left that tour, leaving Page as the band's sole lead guitarist. Jimmy Page hung in with the Yardbirds until 1968, but the band's popularity started to severely decline, really, from 1966 on, and none of their recordings had much effect on the pop markets at that time. But meanwhile, the group continued to tour, and Jimmy Page continued to impress, And by 1968, Ralph and McCarty left the group. So at that point, Jimmy Page took control as the leader and formed the New Yardbirds with singer Robert Plant, drummer John Bonham, bassist John Paul Jones. And by the end of 1968, the group became known as Led Zeppelin and the rest is history. As for the rest of the Yardbirds, well, singer Keith Ralph and drummer Jim McCarty went on to form an acoustic duo called Together and then the progressive rock group called Renaissance. In 1970, that band broke up and Ralph turned to producing before beginning the band Armageddon. In 1976, Ralph was electrocuted and died in his basement at the age of 33 while playing the electric guitar. McCarty moved in and out of several bands before playing with a reformed version of the Yardbirds in 1992. He has also released three solo records. Rhythm guitarist Chris Dredge began a career in photography before working with the Yardbirds spin-off band Box of Frogs in the 1980s. He then joined McCarty in the reformed version of the Yardbirds. But after a series of strokes, he stopped performing in 2013. Original bassist Paul Samuel Smith became a noted producer after leaving the group, and he worked on albums with Cat Stevens, Jethro Tull, Carly Simon, and many more. He did return to performance with Box of Frogs and Renaissance. And after leaving the Yardbirds, Jeff Beck had an incredible career as a guitarist and formed the Jeff Beck Group with singer Rod Stewart. He continued his career as a leader and session guitarist until he recently passed in 2023. 